Okay, we're going to start Chapter 18, the final uh, section of the of the year. And um, as we've talked previously, the Civil War is over. The Union has spent four and a half years, well, well a little over four years, um, winning this battle. It has cost them a ton of money and countless deaths. The tragedy is 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 unbelievable, but especially in the South. Now, there's post-war problems, though, on both the North and the South. But you have to remember that most of the battles in the Civil War, <coughs> excuse me, take place in the South. So, you know, some of these soldiers who go back home to the North are like, oh, my gosh, it's like nothing has ever happened. It's like I've just been away for a couple of days. I'm just come home and nothing has really changed. Because the horrors of the war, the horrors of the battles, are really going to happen primarily in the South. But in the North, there are problems. Now, think about it. You know, all these soldiers that are coming home, there's about 800,000 of them, are coming back to the North, and they need jobs. But uh, there's hardly any jobs to be found because factories are shutting down, laying off the workers. Uh, government has, you know, uh, canceled their orders for guns and for blankets and uniforms and bullets and all the other things that an army needs. So there's um, a little bit of a, a problem for these northerners, n- northern soldiers going home looking for jobs. But in the South, oh, my gosh, the South, it's really bad. And, again, it's going to be that uh, destruction. I mean, uh, the city of Atlanta has been burned down. Um, Charleston has been burned down. Uh, Richmond, of course, has, has been destroyed. So, uh, And then remember with Sherman's March to the Sea, as well as Sheridan's ride down the Shenandoah Valley, homes, barns, bridges, railroad tracks, anything that the Northern Army felt that they uh, could have helped the Southern Army has been destroyed. All right. Oh, I already said that. I guess so. Columbia, Richmond, Atlanta has been leveled. And this is an economic ruin. You know, after the war, the Confederate dollar is absolutely worthless. And many people had loaned money to the Confederacy, you know, um, as far as bonds. Well, guess what? They're never going to get that money back. Many banks close. People lose their savings. People are economically ruined. And obviously, the, the biggest change is going to be a change to society. There's going to be an entirely new class of citizens, or class of people at least, and that's the freedmen. That's the four million slaves that have been freed um, by the war. Uh, What's going to happen to them? Remember, uh, with the slave codes, they weren't allowed to learn to read or write. They don't have a lot of skills. The jobs that they know how to do are are very, uh, you know, unskilled labor. What are we going to do with these people? Well, we have to solve all these problems. Okay, so here's a map again, and this is the South. Uh, former Confederate states are going to be in the orange here. And it's going to have the date that they're finally admitted back into the Union. Remember, Robert E. Lee surrenders the Army of Northern Virginia on, uh, in April of 1865. But look at uh, Tennessee. It doesn't come in until 1870. Same as Georgia, uh, Mississippi, Florida. But if you look at Tennessee, it comes in in 1866. Um, what's another 1866? Nah, I can't think that's it. All right? And there's going to be a reason for that, and we're going to talk about that next. So that is the map of the United States. Oh, by the way, you will notice that we've added some new territories. Nebraska's its normal size now, right? Kansas has been cut back, and we've added the Colorado Territory, um, the Arizona Territory. Um, you'll notice up here, though, this is still kind of we used to be part of the Nebraska Territory right here. This is going to be the future states of what? North and South Dakota. All right. Okay. So as early as 1863, you know, Abraham Lincoln is looking ahead. What are we going to do? Lincoln's always looking to heal the nation, to bind up its nation's wounds, all right? So Lincoln, as early as 1863, starts coming up with a plan, and it's called the 10% plan, all right? And this is a plan to rebuild the South. He feels that the quicker the South can, uh, the Southern states enter the Union, the quicker they're going to be able to rebuild the state. Hence, they'll be able to rebuild and heal the country. So Lincoln's plan, known as the 10% plan, says that uh, Southern states could form a new government after only 10% of the voters swear an oath of loyalty to the United States. The states have to abolish slavery, and then they can elect members to Congress. All right. Now, um, he's not going to allow leaders, former leaders, like presidents and vice presidents and things like that, 
to take part. But the plan offers an amnesty, which is a government pardon, to most of the Confederates who swear loyalty. Now, again, like I said, former Confederate leaders are not given amnesty. All right? Now, now, Congress isn't real happy about this. In fact, other Republicans are like, nah, that's too soft. That's, you're going too easy on there, Honest Abe. And they think that uh, it needs to be a little bit harsher. And what they said is that a majority, uh, get this one, a majority of white men in each southern states had to wear slo- swear loyalty to the Union. But here's the really crazy one. Anyone, anyone who had volunteered to fight for the Confederacy was denied the right to vote or hold office. Now, guys, think about this. Don't you think that, you know, a majority of the men in the South had volunteered or had been forced, you know, had fought for the Confederacy? I guess the way Davis looks at it, for the people who are drafted, you know, forced to fight, maybe we're going to allow them to, but anybody who volunteered to fight, we're not going to let them vote or hold office. Well, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That means only a few people are going to be able to have the right to vote in the South. Well, Lincoln refuses to sign this plan, thank goodness, because this is way too harsh. Now the President and Congress did agree on one plan. Now, a month before Lee surrenders at Appomattox Courthouse, Congress and the President did agree on the Freedmen's Bureau. Freedmen's Bureau, and it sounds just like it sounds. Freedmen, former slaves who are now free, all right? This is a government agency to help... um, primarily former slaves, but also some poor whites with food and clothing. They're also going to look to try to find them jobs. Uh, They're going to look for medical care. And they're also going to set up schools, all right? Uh, Some of the African-American schools that we know of today, Howard, Fisk, Morehouse, you know, some of these southern schools get their start during the Freedmen's Bureau. And again, most of the volunteers, teachers are going to come, and a lot of them are going to be women from the north. And uh, there's stories about you know, these schools are being set up, and there's going to be people of all ages sitting side by side learning to read and write. The, the thirst for knowledge for these former slaves is, is incredible. Um, you're going to have little children next to adults, next to grandparents, all trying to get an education, all right? And again, the Bureau created colleges for African Americans like uh, Howard, Fisk, Morehouse, and several others, all right? So they do agree on one plan, at least, and that's the Freedmen's Bureau. Now, Lincoln is really hoping that, you know, once this war is over, that he's going to be able to persuade Congress to accept his plan, you know, the 10% plan. You know, allow the South to come back in and start healing the nation. But unfortunately, as you guys know, Lincoln is assassinated by John Wilkes Booth on April 14th, 1865, in Ford's Theater. Now, John Wilkes Booth is a very, very popular actor. A lot of people know this guy, but he's a Southern sympathizer. He is from Baltimore, Maryland, and he uh, hates uh, Lincoln. He's tried on a previous occasion to try to capture the president, and now he finds out that Lincoln is going to be at the Ford's Theater. Uh, It's actually a coup. Uh, His gang is going to also attack the vice president, Johnson, and also uh, Secretary of State, I think it is, and they are going to try to decapitate the northern government. John Wilkes Booth uh, does sneak into the Ford's Theater, creeps up in the box, and shoots uh, Lincoln in the head with a 41 caliber Derringer. He then jumps out of the box onto the stage. His spurs get caught into some of the bunting that decorates the president's box, and he breaks his leg. He is able to escape out of Washington, D.C., and the greatest manhunt in American history begins. They finally capture him in a, uh, in a uh, tobacco barn where he is, uh, he is killed. All right? And now the nation, who is just coming off the celebration of Lee's surrender, they're so glorious and happy, are now plunged into despair and sadness at the assassination of President Lincoln. Remember, Lincoln, when he came into office in 1861, March of 1861 is when he took his oath of office, you know, only, uh, you know, not even four out of ten people wanted him. But now this man has led America through its very darkest period, and I think now people realized uh, what a great uh, man and president he was. Now, the new president's going to be Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson is his new uh, vice president. He is from Tennessee. He is a southerner. 
But when Tennessee broke away and joined the South, uh, Andrew Johnson actually stayed loyal to the North. So when John, uh, 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 President Lincoln runs for re-election, he selects Andrew Johnson as a symbol, a Southerner, right? A Southerner who stayed loyal to the Union to be his vice, vice president. But I'm sure nobody imagined that Andrew Johnson is going to be the president just, uh, let's see, uh, March, uh, April, you know, a month after Lincoln is uh, reelected. Okay. All right, so Andrew Johnson is n the new president. Now, Johnson has another plan. And now the uh, Republicans in the North think that Johnson's going to lay the hammer down. Okay. This is Johnson's reconstruction plan. Majority of voters in each of the southern states had to pledge loyalty to the Union. Each state must ratify the 13th Amendment, which bans slavery throughout the nation. All right? And that's it. That's it. What about southern leaders? Well, there's nothing in there about that. All right? So guess what? Southern states quickly meet Johnson's conditions. So, you know, oh, yeah, 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 we're loyal, we're loyal. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll ban the, you know, we'll ratify the 13th Amendment. And uh, the president then approved the new state uh, governments in late 1865. Now, Southern voters are now able to go to the polls and elect representatives to the House and Senate. And, oh, my gosh, you're not going to believe this. They end up electing prob the, the, the same dudes, the guys that had led them out of the Union, the guys that, who had been leaders of the Confederate government. In fact, the vice president of the Confederacy is elected to be a senator from Georgia. Now, Republicans in Congress are outraged, right, that many of those who had held uh, office in the Confederacy are now going to be allowed back into the government. And by the way, no southern state has allowed African Americans to vote. So guess what happens? The Republicans in Congress refuse to let them take their seats in the House and Senate. Instead, they set up a joint committee on Reconstruction, and this is going to be uh, this is going to be pretty tough. Okay, so now you have the president who's come up with a plan, you know Johnson's Reconstruction plan, and then you have the Congress, and the you know who's refused to allow these guys to take the seat. We have now set up kind of a showdown between the president as well as the Congress. All right, so there you have it. Um, you know, a lot of problems in the Reconstruction. Unfortunately, the, the man that probably could have solved this, President Lincoln, is dead. The new President Johnson is already having problems with Congress. Okay, we'll see what happens tomorrow.